Mars arrive, Spud? What's the ruddy idea? <laughs> Total war, isn't it? What do you want? Message from HQ. Where's the CO? In the barn. Follow me. Message from headquarters, sir. Sergeant Hawkins! Read it. Uh, Tink code, sir. Message begins. Exercise invasion of the London area by regular army. Home guard defending. Yeah. War starts at midnight. Message ends. The CO's put in pencil here, sir. Make it like the real thing. Oh, he has, has he? Section commanders. Message from HQ. War starts at midnight. You have your orders? Tell them in. Oh, and tell them to make it like the real thing. What do you mean by the real thing, Spud? Well, obviously, our loss is divided by ten and the enemy's multiplied by twenty. Yes, sir. That's all for now. Sir. Anything for me, sir? No, no, nothing else. Number one, sir. War starts at midnight. We know. They know. We attack. They counterattack. Like the real thing, my Aunt Fanny. Like the real thing. Like the real thing! Sergeant Hawkins, section commanders! So war starts at midnight, does it? Sir? We attack at six. Take all the Tommy guns and four, no, three trucks. Section leaders with Tommy guns, arm the men with bombs, rifles, bears. Tommy. Sir? From your section, Rice, Unsworth. The two Yes, the two owns. Now be it Tooks and Cochrane. Not Cochrane, sir. All right, I'll leave it to you. Stuffy, who are the biggest toughs in your lot? Bill Wall, Wimpy, Mattapan, and yes. Popeye. Right. Yours, Robin? Frank, Skeet, Dougie Stewart, sir. Chappy, Geordie, sir? Pasty, Porky Sims, and Pat Sullivan, sir. Die Evans, sir. Oh, Die Evans, we must have him. Look, you. All right, get going. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? Did you say that we attacked before war is declared? Yes, like Pearl Harbor. I'll get going. Oh, by the way, there's just one stop at the pool. I got a date there with Mata Hari. Careless talk? Yeah. Now, scram. <laughs> I wonder what's keeping Spud. Come on. Afternoon, Sergeant Hawkins. Good afternoon, miss. Hey! Oh, he's back on the tracks. She's halfway to London by now. She's gone to warn the wizard. Come on, get my tin hat. Come on, after it. The barricade does them, sir. Good. Yes. You know, sir, you ought to have one of these field dressings on that. Save it for her. She'll need it somewhere else when I catch up with her. Barricade, my boys. Well, at midnight on the dot, it's got to be closed. And of course, the enemy can't get through before. Huh? Because why? Because war starts at midnight. What's the objective, sir? Royal Bathers Club, Piccadilly. What about Mother Hurry? We'll beat her to it. I know a couple of shortcuts after Marble Arch. Trucks are close up. See if you can pass her. Dust that taxi. Steady. Keep right on his tail. Don't follow her. Keep straight on. Second left. We've got her.
Number one section? Uh, number two? Yes, sir. Number three? Yes, sir. You have your orders? Mr. Graves, Sergeant Hawkins? Sir. Yes, sir. Did General win candy in the club? Uh, no, sir. The General left an hour ago with Brigadier General Caldicott and Air Vice Marshal Lloyd Hughes. Did he say where he was going? Excuse me, sir, but what is your business with the General? I have a message with him, an urgent message. You give me the message, I'll see if the General gets it. Damn it all, man. Are you the Home Guard? Why, sir? The password is Viv Kiko 1911. The General and his staff are in the Turkish bar, sir. Sergeant Hawkins, sir, you're in charge up here. Stay with him and don't leave your desk around the telephone. You're a prisoner. The war doesn't start till midnight. Ah, that's what you think. Sergeant, sir. That girl under the desk there, she's a prisoner too. Sir. Corporal, they men with... All right, boys, this is it. Brute force and ruddy ignorance. Come on, up, bring double up. Guys, who are you, Cargill? Is it? Sergeant's man. And answer that ten telephone, will you? Yes. Yes, miss. One general win can. He can't do that, miss. Sorry, miss, the general's a prisoner, and so are you. Oh, now the war's over. And you, sir, you will bring me down this now. Please! This is an army exercise. You're all prisoners now. Stay where you are. Tim, come here. Where's General Wynne Candy? Who, sir? You heard? In the, the steam room. Come on, then, show me the way. Go on. This is it. Sir. Sir. Go away. General Wing Candy. Hmm. What? Who is it? Lieutenant Wilson, sir, 2nd Battalion, the Loamshire, sir. What do you want, eh? Well, sir, I'm afraid, sir, we've, uh... Well, say it, man, say it. I've no time to waste. Oh, yes, you have, sir. I beg your pardon, sir? You've got all night, sir. Attended! I'm afraid he can't come. Why? He's a prisoner, sir. What's going on here? Invasions. But you damned young idiot, war starts at midnight, haven't you been told? Oh, yes, sir. That's why we're here. But may I ask on what authority? On the authority of these guns and these men, sir. Authority? Authority? How dare you, sir? How dare you? Get out of here, sir, you and your gang of awful militia gangsters. Get out! Popeye, sir. Guard this man. Stuffy, sir. Go to the cubicles. Find which is General Wynne Candies. You'll find a brown pigskin case there. Bring it. Yes, sir. But you can't do that. The, the code is in that case. The whole exercise will be a farce if you have that code. Oh, no, sir. This is going to be the real thing, sir. But war starts at midnight. Oh, yes. You say war starts at midnight. How do you know the enemy says so, too? But, my dear fellow, that was agreed, wasn't it? Agreed, my foot. How many agreements have been kept by the enemy since this war started? We agreed to keep to the rules of the game, and they go on kicking us in the pants. When I joined the army, the only agreement I entered into was to defend my country by every means at my disposal, not only by the National Sporting Club rules, but by every means that have existed since Kane slugged Abel. Stop it. Don't we know that they're counting on us to keep to the rules? Stop that it. That they openly boast about it? That they laugh Stop at us? Stop it! Lieutenant Watson, or whatever your name is, you are not in Hyde Park with an audience of loafers. I am Major General Wynne Candy. These other gentlemen have all seen service, distinguished service with the British Army. All I can say, sir, that when Napoleon said that an army marched on its stomach, I better stop, sir. You're an extremely impudent young officer. But let me tell you that in 40 years' time, you'll be an old gentleman, too. And if your belly keeps pace with your head, you'll have a bigger one than any of us. Maybe I shall in 40 years, but I doubt it. I doubt if I'll have time to grow a moustache like yours, sir. But in 1983, at least I shall be able to say that 40 years ago, I was a fellow of Enterprise. I'll punch your head for that young fellow, a young puppy, put him up.
Mr. Candy, sir? Yes, thanks, Peters. Since when are you in London? Got back yesterday, sickly. Uh-huh. I say, I've been searching for you all over the city. Yes? I'm terribly sorry to hear about your leg. Jumping jaws of that, they're both there. What the hell do you think I was standing on? I thought you had a wooden leg. Why should I have a wooden leg? They told me in Bloemfontein they cut off your left leg. Can't have, old boy. I'd have known about it. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Call the cab, Potter? Yes, sir. Boy? Handsome mind, growl as barred. He knows, sir. Could have done with a nap myself. Got all night, haven't you? Going to the theater tonight. Can't you sleep there? Invited. Two ladies. Could I come? One is the mother. Your cab, sir. Ah, the opera singers, eh? Hm. No wonder civilians are grumbling about the army. Ought to be ashamed of themselves. Yelling and screaming like some damned, damned foreigner. It's a nice state of things. Officers and men losing their lives in South Africa, while young officers are roaring about public places like drunkards. Perhaps you are drunk, huh? What's it? VC, sir. Where'd you get it? South Africa, Jordan Sutton. Your candy. Sugar candy. Yes, sir. Huh. Good show, candy. Thank you, sir. Hop well, sir. Hopful? Hopful? What a son of Barney Hopful of the 66? Yes, sir. They're very musical. No, sir. Let me show you. Do you mean Mignon, sir? I am Titania. You're what? Titania, sir. We were shut up together with her in a blockhouse for seven months near your downsiding. I beg your pardon? It's an aria, sir. You know, Mignon. We had a phonograph and broke every record but that one. We know it by heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you boys going to the city? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, that's where I'm going. <laughs> can I, uh, can I give you a lift? No, thank you, sir. We've got a cab. Right. Sir James is planet. Right, sir. I uh, hope you two boys enjoy your leave. You earned it. Thank you, sir. Mind you sorting the door, sir. Boy! Another handsome old oh, horse thief. <laughs> Ever ridden in one? Rather. All the way to Epsom. Lovely lines, hasn't she? Top in. Hop it tidy, sir? No, no, we've just come over for a warm. Same beastly drizzle, same fog and soot, good old London. Now listen, Sergey. You remember that interview you gave the Times? You don't mean to say you read it? Me? No. But I have a niece who has a governess who has a sister. Pretty? Never laid eyes on her, but she read it. Who? My niece's governess's sister in Berlin. 
And she wrote to her sister over here, who gave the letter to my niece to give to me, to give to you. Who do I give it to? Nobody. It's for you, and there it is. Why? Well, read it, you big ape. You'll find out. It's interesting. Mine, sir, has a niece. Yes, cut it short, my boy, cut it short. You say he has something about a letter. One, who wrote it? Two, what's in it? Three, what's the war office got to do with it? Four, I'll tell you. Five, out. One. A girl wrote it from Berlin, sir. Her name's Edith Hunter. She's a governess there. Hmm, rather an uncomfortable billet just now. That's just it, sir. They hate us in Germany. They're spreading propaganda all over Europe that we're killing women and children in South Africa that we're starving them in concentration camps, shooting mothers, burning babies. You wouldn't believe the things they've invented. I spoke this afternoon to Conan Doyle. He thinks something ought to be done about it, too. About what? And what's all this about a letter? And who's Conan Doyle? The author chap, sir, writes the Sherlock Holmes stories in the Strand magazine. Well, this Doyle fellow writes the Sherlock Holmes stories? Yes, sir. Con Conan Doyle. You must have seen his name. Never heard of him. But I've read every Sherlock Holmes story since they started in July 91. Are you reading The Heart of the Baskervilles? Sir? Am I not? What did you think of the end of the last installment? A bit of a face of a poor old Watson, sir. <laughs> Lovely evening, my dear Watson. I really think you'll be more comfortable outside than in. <laughs> <laughs> Sarcastic devil, that fellow Holmes. I once had a CEO just like him. He must be rather a good fellow, as author's girl. Well, sir, Mr. Conan Doyle is collecting material about our campaign in South Africa to counter German propaganda. Uh, the Times printed an interview with me about seven weeks ago. Oh, that's bad. Good rule to keep out of the newspapers. Still, the Times a bit different. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Yes, sir. In this interview, I mentioned the name of a place called Jordan Siding. I was there for seven months. Now, this girl writes from Berlin that the worst stories of all are being put about by a fellow called Kamitz, who says he saw with his own eyes British soldiers kill 250 women and children at Jordan Siding in order to save feeding them. Do you know this fellow, Kaunitz? Of course, sir. He's the most awful little rat. He was spying for us and spying for the Boers. He made South Africa too hot for himself and skipped. Both sides would have shot him if they'd caught him. I see. What do you want me to do about it? My leave isn't up for four weeks, sir. Why shouldn't I go to Berlin and confront this little rat? I'll soon... Please. My dear boy! First of all, it's not done. This isn't army business, it's embassy. Leave politics to the politicians. You wouldn't like a diplomat to come charging into the front line with your company, would you? Might do him a lot of good, sir. Juvenile nonsense, my boy. Sorry, sir. You must send home in order to recuperate. Your country needs you. Play golf? Yes, sir. Well, what's your form? About ten, sir. Yeah. Care for a game? Sorry, sir. I'm invited by Lady Gilpin to Leicestershire. Start tomorrow. Oh, uh, enjoy yourself. Am I Major Plumley? By the way. This author chap. Author chap, sir? Yes, this fellow that rode Hound of the Baskervilles. Conan Doyle? Yes. You didn't happen to ask him by any chance what happens in the next installment? Uh, just a moment. Did you? Yes, sir, there's another murder. Not the Baron? No, sir, the Baron that's safe. Good. Good, I'm glad. Warm for January. Damn cold, I call it. Take my tip, my boy. You've got a damn good VC, and I'll keep quiet for a bit. Hmm? Well, what'd he say? Look here, do you still want to go to the theater tonight? Well, I like that. You told me when I Never asked you... Never mind what I said. Here you are, Box A, Her Majesty's Theater, the last of the dandies. Introduce yourself to Lady Gilpin and Sybil. Say I've gone on some secret mission. Make me out the most mysterious romantic figure. Girl's pretty, mother's a gorgon. Are you going on a secret mission? Yes, to Berlin. Did he send you? No, it's a secret from him, too. Morning, Preeti. You send those flowers? Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Hopwell, there's a postcard for you, sir. Ah, Mr. Kelly. 
So they all got that. How is Mr. Candy, sir? Ready to sir. Mr. Candy? Miss Hunter? Yes. Thank you for your telegram. It came as a great surprise to me. I had no idea you were in Berlin. Nor had I till now. I beg your pardon? I only arrived yesterday. Do you... Can you possibly mean that you've come here solely on account of my letter? Well, naturally. You don't mind, do you? No, no, of course not. Well, shall we sit down? Did you have a good journey? Excellent. I'm sorry to bring you out in such weather. I was about to call on you. Oh, I've changed my address. Indeed? Yes, my position became intolerable. I've had to leave. No. English people are not very popular in Berlin at the moment, you know. Do you mean you've lost your job because you're English? Yes. Can you get another job? Perhaps in a few months' time, not now. What will you do now? Go back. To England? Yes, I'm afraid so. Cheer up. England isn't as bad as all that, you know. That is what we both want to prove, isn't it, Mr. Candy? Yes, Miss Hunter. How shall we begin? Well, you mentioned in your letter a fellow named Kaunitz. Do you know what he looks like? No, I've never seen him. I know a cafe where he and his friends hold their stamtish. You do? That means they have a table regularly reserved for them there. Do you know any of his friends, Miss Hunter? Yes, one, a student. Brother of my employer, my ex-employer. He is a Borschenschafter. You know what Borschenschafts are? No, Miss Hunter. They are associations of students professing political principles. They assert them by drinking beer and fighting duels. Dueling is very popular here, I believe. Oh, yes. It's a proud father that has a scarred son, and vice versa. German girls find scars very attractive. A book was recently published on the German colonies, in which it was specifically stated that one of the advantages of possessing dueling scars was that the natives of Africa look with more respect upon a white man who bears them than upon those who do not. <laughs> I feel like Stanley and Livingston. Surely not both, <laughs> Mr. Candy. No, you're Miss Livingston. I'm the missionary. Livingston was the missionary, Mr. Candy. Uh, oh, yes, of course. So he was. Well, about this cafe, can you take me there this evening? Do you wish me to accompany you? Of course. Very well. I mean, it's awfully nice of you. I should obviously be absolutely lost without you. Then, Mr. Candy, you are Livingston, I presume. <laughs> Just now, the miller ging rum and rum. The mill went round and round, Mr. Candy. Miss Hunter, I'm afraid I've met you here under false pretenses. Indeed, why? There are political complications. The Prince of Wales is coming to Berlin. He's invited to the Kaiser's birthday party. Goodwill visit and all that sort of thing, you know. Yes, I know. It was in the papers. You see, Miss Hunter, I know a chap at our embassy here. We were at school together. His name's Fitzroy. <laughs> Only we used to call him Baby Fitz. 
But, but how are the Prince of Wales and your friend Babyface connected? Well, you see, he nearly had a fit when he knew why I cut him. Babyface, I mean. He lugged me in to see the second secretary, and he nearly had a fit, too. The possible scandal, you know. Are you coming to a point, Mr. King? Yes. The point is that I had to promise to do nothing. And I went bail for you, too. Oh. Apparently, it's a matter for careful, careful diplomacy. You can see what they mean. Yes, of course. I know nothing about politics. I rather stuck my head in where I wasn't wanted. You know, I could get into the most awful trouble. Trouble, Mr. Candy? Well, I'm a soldier. You know that, Miss Hunter? I thought you were a soldier this morning, Mr. Candy. Or have you joined the army since lunch? Wittmeister von Heumann, Wittmeister Hoffmann, meiner Camille Tollen. The table's filling up. Who's table? Don't you remember the stand dish? It's where Carnets was set. You know, it's a bit staggering to see a girl take such an interest in politics. Politics? Well, what else can you call it? German propaganda against England, counter-propaganda, this forbidden thing. That's politics, isn't it? Not for me, nor for a great many people. You see, Mr. Candy, when our embassy in Berlin reports to the Foreign Office in London that a slight change of attitude is visible in the German nationals towards the Boer question, I have to report home in my letter that I have lost my position and am returning to the bosom of my family. I suppose they'd be rather sick about it. On the contrary, they will welcome me with open arms. I don't blame them, I know. No, no, Mr. Candy, you see, my family were opposed to my coming to Berlin. They said that the best place for a young girl is home. Quite so. Why? What do you mean, why? How do you know what is the best place for a young girl? Are you a girl? Oh, I say Have you any daughters? I say it. You see, while you men have been fighting, we women have been thinking. Think for yourself, Mr. Candy. What careers are there open to a woman? She can get married. I was just yes, going to say. supposing she doesn't want to get married. She can go and be a governess. But what does a governess know, Mr. Candy? Nothing, I assure you. Then what can she teach the children who are in her charge? Very little except good manners. If she herself has good manners. The good manners are important. Did you learn that in South Africa, Mr. Candy? My brothers told me that good manners cost us Magafontein, Stornberg, and Colenso. 6,000 men killed and 20,000 wounded. And two years of war. When with a little common sense and bad manners, there would have been no war at all. One thing I don't understand is why you should have to teach German children manners. I should have thought there were plenty of English kids. I will tell you if you promise not to laugh at me. Promise? My only asset is a fluent command of English. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, to teach English in England is to carry coals to Newcastle and correspondingly ill paid. I therefore decided to obtain a post in Germany where my English would command a premium. And having learned German, to return to England where my German. Well, I'll be sugar. <laughs> Is he? It's him, all right, the little skunk. <laughs> well, shall we go? Go? Oh, yes, I suppose so. History will remember this as the great retreat from the Cafe Hohenzollern. Just a second, please. Here we are. Can you get the orchestra to play 141? Why, yes, of course, call the waiter. Herr Ober? Why, it's Mignon. I am Titania. Do you really like Please, it? ask him. I'll explain later. Hello, Bob. Can you tell me how many kids you play? But naturally. Herr Kapellmeister. Der Tisch da drüben wünscht die Mignon. Die Dame mit dem Hut. Garnitz was a prisoner in our blockhouse for seven weeks. This was the only record we had in our phonograph. I want to see if he remembers it. Also, Garnitz, nun erzählen Sie mal. Also, meine Herren, diese peinende Engländer, diese Verdammt, und von Sie mal auf Damen. Touched him on the raw, all right. Ich bitte um Zeigen, aber diese Musik kann ich nicht leiden. Wieder wird es gut. 
Da drüben. Herr Candy. Come on, Garnet, you speak English? I do. But I prefer German. Meine Damen und Herren! Stop it, Garnet, I'm with a lady. You should have thought of that before you started your little joke. And love the mirror, does he? Stop it, Garnet. Take off your. Come on, be a good man. Was must do? Get back to your table. Dafür werden Sie Rechenschaft geben. Sie pflegeln Sie. Rasch hilf mir, Hans! Herr Kapellmeister, spielen Sie. Spielt Sie ein Walzer. Please tell him that it's all his fault. He started it. Engländer! Bitte, meine Herren, kein Skandal! Bitte, meine Herren! Die dulden englische Schweine in ihrem Lokal. Wir haben gar nichts gemacht. Mit Ihnen haben wir nichts zu tun, Fräulein. Manners? Oh, ich spreche Englisch. You will get into great trouble, my man. You are not now in England. You saw very well that he asked for it. Was hat er gesagt? Ja. Herr Kaunitz ist ein Brentobast. You will satisfaction give. Please stop shouting. You don't understand. This gentleman and Herr Kaunitz are old friends. Was hat er gesagt? Ja. Sie sagt, Kaunitz und er sind alte Freunde. It's <laughs> going a bit far to call that skunk a friend of mine. Herr Kaunitz is a member of the Alldeutsche Verband. Then the Alldeutsche Verband ought to be ashamed of itself. Er sagt, der Alldeutsche Verband soll sich verschämen. Of the Imperial German Army are member of the Alldeutsche Verband. Then the officers of the Imperial German Army ought to be ashamed of themselves too. Meine Damen und Herren, er hat gesagt, die Offiziere der Armee seiner Majestät des Kaisers sollen sich verschämen.
Bitte sehr. Von Ritter. Und schön, Äh, Fitzroy. An ihn. An ihn. Können wir mit Ihnen Deutsch sprechen? Natürlich. Was wünschen Sie, meine Herren? Uh, Being we'll on be... British territory, shall we rather speak in English? Oh, right oh, How can I help you, gentlemen? Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> we wish some information about a compatriot of yours in Berlin, a certain Mr. Candy. Clive Candy? Yes, Clive Candy. Uh, you come to the right man. I know him well. We were at Harrow together. Indeed. Yes, we've lost touch a bit since mm. the war, though. He's army, you know. He is an officer of the British Army. Yes, he's just returned from South Africa. Oh, this is excellent news. Ausgezeichnet, der Mann ist Offizier. Großartig! You have relieved us from great doubts. I don't quite understand. We were worried that your friend might not be able to give satisfaction. Satisfaction? It is understood that an officer of the Imperial German Army cannot demand satisfaction from an opponent who is not his equal in position and honor. But since this Clive Candy is an officer, he can be challenged. Challenged? To what? To a duel, Mr. Fitzroy. Duel? <laughs> Dedicate, hurry over to the Kaiser Hope, bring Mr. Clive Candy in your bus. Don't come back without him. Where is he? I told you to hurry, Dave. Now don't, don't argue, you go at once. Mr. Candy has insulted the whole of the German army. Oh, I didn't insult anybody, sir. I only said that if the army officers belong to the old Deutsche Verbund with Kaunitz... Then, then the German army ought to be ashamed of itself, that's what you said. Eighty-two Ulan officers want to challenge you. Yeah, Mr. Candy's told me the whole story. Uh, by the way, Candy, that girl you mentioned, is she trustworthy? Oh, undoubtedly, sir. No. Colonel, we're sure he's not suggested that Mr. Candy should fight the whole officer corps. They are drawing lots, sir, to decide who is to have the honor of fighting this gentleman. Who has not insulted anybody. Yes, I, I agree. Have you any suggestions, Colonel? Literally speaking, Mr. Candy has no option. He cannot fight a duel, he must run away. Politically speaking, such an action would be disastrous. Now, Mr. Candy must fight. Uh, yes, but gentlemen, one moment. You know, surely you're leaving Mr. Candy out of your calculations. I'll fight if necessary, sir. Yes, my dear boy, I know that. Now, you'd better go to your hotel. Yes, yes and stay there. Oh, and could you get in touch with Miss... Uh... Miss Hunter, sir? I believe I could. Well, explain to her it's necessary to give the impression that your reasons for coming to Berlin were to see her. Hmm? You're probably in love with her or something of the sort. I say so, but I'm not. Well, my dear Mr. Candy, you've caused enough trouble already. Do what I ask. And meanwhile, I and these gentlemen will discuss the best way to get you out of this. And us. May I have a codex, Sir Rittmeister? Thank you. This is our famous brown codex, Colonel Goodhead. Code of honor observed by all duelists. We thought you might not be familiar with it. Thank you. I shall study it with attention. We have permission to offer for the site of the duel, the gymnasium at the barracks of our regiment. We agree. We are now in the position to announce the name of our fellow officer who will fight Lieutenant Candy. Oberleutnant Theodor Kretschmer Schuldorf. May I make a note of that? With the greatest of pleasure. His card. Thank you. Have you gentlemen any suggestions regarding choice of leader for the duel? We suggest the military attaché to the Swedish legation. Schon angemessen, Herr Rittmeister. Ausgezeichnet. We agree. His name is... Colonel Borg. Colonel Borg. Regarding sabers, we shall of course supply a number to choose from. With your permission, we shall supply a number as well. Most well, certainly, Colonel. The choice of sabers will be determined by lot. I see. Good. You know, of course, that uh, sabers must not exceed the maximum weight of 60 decagrams. 60 decagrams. We shall make a note of it. You will, of course, bring your own, Doctor. We shall bring ours. We agree. Do you prefer to strip the upper parts of the bodies of the combatants, or do you prefer them in shirt sleeves? Shirt sleeves. I see here that paragraph 133 says, 
A few hours previous to the duel, it is advisable to take a bath. Only the principles, not the seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very strange sensation to be preparing a duel between two people who've never even seen each other. It happens sometimes. Marriages also, you know. <laughs> By the way, has your man ever fought a duel? No. Has yours? Strictly between ourselves, um, Theo doesn't really approve of duels. Then, gentlemen, is this fight really necessary? Sir, there are moments in a soldier's life when his personal feelings do not count. Oberleutnant Kretschmer Schuldorf knows his duties. They will. We have not agreed upon the time, gentlemen. Will seven o'clock in the morning be agreeable to you? Get it over early. I agree. Seven o'clock. It would be advisable to meet half an hour earlier. At 6.30 a.m. in the gymnasium of the barracks of the second new lounge. Here comes our man. Morning, Slepwell. Very. Yes, he was still sleepy when I called for him at the hotel. Uh, Dr. Wigman. Your nerves are all right, my boy. Dr. Crowler and Mr. Ken. How do you do? How do you do? Oh. Why wasn't I allowed any breakfast? Because the book says not. It would. Ah, you'll do. Do you want this? I, uh, I hope you've read it. Miss Hunter read it. She says it's a joke, good enough for punch. <laughs> Where is Theo Kretschmar Schuldorf? Oh, he hasn't shown up yet. I congratulate you on your pronunciation of the name. I learned it by heart, so that when my grandchildren say, Grandpa, have you ever cut anybody's ear off? I should be able to say, yes, Theo Kretschmar Schuldorf. <laughs> Nobody could invent a name like that. Hello, who's this? Colonel Borg, the Swedish military attaché. He's going to lead the combat. Colonel Borg, Mr. Candy. I must, of course, use German expressions. I shall say los for starting and halt for stop. Can you memorize these two words? I'll try, sir. Anyhow, at the beginning, I'll be pretty sure that you mean start, and during the combat, you're not likely to say start again. That is true. Excuse me. Seven o'clock. Theo Kretschmar Schuldorf will forfeit his entrance fee if he isn't. <laughs> I brought my uniform. How are you with a sabre? Oh, I don't know. I know which end to hold. We drew lots for them. Hope mine's a nice light one. Oh, all sabres weigh the same. Seconds, please. Excuse me, please. Would you undo your shirt? Thank you. Right. Do you want to roll up your sleeve or will you rip it off? What's better? I am not permitted to give advice. I think I'll rip it. It is definitely better. Doctor, your scissors, please. What did you hope to find in there? Protective bandages. Good luck, my boy. Now, you alone will come with me, please. You better rub your feet in the rosin. Ich werde jetzt das Protokoll verlesen. 
I shall read now the protocol. Sie dürfen den Kampf erst auf das Kommando los beginnen. You will start only at the command los. Sie müssen den Kampf auf das Kommando halt unterbrechen, wer es auch immer gibt. You must stop the combat if you hear the command, halt, whoever may say it. Sobald Sie sich verwundet fühlen, haben Sie den Kampf sofort einzustellen und durch Zurückspringen die Distanz einzunehmen, auch wenn nicht halt kommandiert wird. If you feel to be wounded, you must stop the combat and by leaping back you must regain position at the original distanz, even if no halt has been commanded. Es ist verboten, die Waffe des Gegners mit der bloßen Hand zu ergreifen. It is forbidden to seize the weapon of the opponent with a bare hand. Sekundanten, bitte. Einnehmen. Into fighting position, please. They must have started by now. You never know. I heard of one chap whose nerve broke. Absolutely went all to pieces. Poor fellow. He was in such a funk, this chap, that he couldn't even lift his arm. His seconds tried to lift it for him, but as soon as they let go, down it dropped like a railroad signal. Shh. Run. I say, I hope our chap doesn't get killed. It'll create an awful stink if he does. Mr. Fitzroy, I think you are the most odious man I've ever met. And if anything does happen to him, I'll, I'll blow up your embassy. I say. Are you a suffragette, Miss Hunter? Never mind, but if anything does happen to Mr. Candy, oh, I shall... mean not... Shuggy? I was talking about the German fella. <laughs> Nothing could possibly ever happen to Shuggy. He won the fencing shield at school two years running. Do you know that man has the most... Oh, look! Miss Hunter. Good afternoon. You can go in now, my dear. How is he? The doctor says six to eight weeks. Not longer. Fit as a fiddle. I'm so glad. They've given permission for you to stay here in the building. Oh, I'm not staying in Germany, Colonel Goodhead. I go back tomorrow. I've already telegraphed my father. Haven't you told her? No. Now, Miss Hunter, you must be sensible. We're very fortunate that everything has gone off so well. You wouldn't want to spoil everything, would you? Spoil everything? The duel was generally supposed to be about you. What would people say if you left him now? Wounded and alone in a nursing home. Naturally, I thought you understood all this. Otherwise, why have you come here? 
Say goodbye to Mr. Candy. Go in now, Miss Hunter. And don't bother about the bills. They have orders to send those to the embassy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Miss Hunter. Well? Good afternoon, Miss Hunter. You are Miss Hunter, are you not? My name is Erna Koenig and I speak really excellent English. Oh, that's splendid. How is he? He can neither hear nor speak. It will be very difficult for a day or two until we take the bandages off. He has a fine cut. His upper lip is very nearly severed. It is really almost ten centimeters in length. A knife could not have done it better. Is he in great pain? Oh, but certainly. He is a very lucky man not to have glass splinters in the wound. Glass splinters. It is a very common accident in our winter. The oh, snow freeze on the boot, the warm room melts the ice, and the little piece of slippery ice lie in wait for the hurrying foot. But to fall right through the glass window of the British ambassador, that is not so common. No, indeed. And would you believe it? We have another accident in the next wing. An officer. He is cut to the forehead. Twelve stitches. Quite a coincidence. I go now to prepare your room. You are staying here, don't you? Yes, Nurse Anne, I do. If you wish to speak to him, please do shout. you into an awful mess. Awful mess. You've got me into a mess too. I forgive you. Do you want me to write to your people in England? Parents? Brother? Sister? Fiance? Oh, you want your wallet? Oh, your aunt. What's the address? Your aunt seems to like short letters. What shall I tell her, the truth? Excellent. Hunting accident. <laughs> Do you know Oberleutnant Kretschmar Schuldorf is here? He has a very bad cut on his forehead. Eight stitches. Oh, he has 12 stitches. Here is refreshment, Miss Hunter. Then you must depart for today. When can he have visitors? Wednesday is visitor's day, Miss Hunter. Every Wednesday? Every Wednesday from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. At 5 p.m. a bell is rung for the end of visitor's hours. Ach, die wunderbaren Ulanen. Auf die User. Oh, bitte sehr. Nach ihm. What does he say, Aubrey? I think he wants us to go first, sir. Can't do that, can we? Uh, you and I, uh, you know, together. Oh, uh, bitte sehr. Ach, wie nett. Was können Sie bloß sein? Keine Ahnung. Engländer. Oh, danke, danke, Fräulein. I had thought that no one could smoke so much as a German officer. Now I see that a British officer can surpass him. And not only in smoking, my dear nurse Erna. Uh, and in what else also? Eating, drinking, making love, growing moustaches. Miss Hunter, I'm going to grow a moustache. What is your opinion? Excellent. Our dragoons gave you the idea. Oh, 
You always find me out. I saw them cross the vestibule preceded by their moustaches. They nearly caused a diplomatic incident at the door. They collided with a party of Ulans coming from... My dear Miss Hunter, soldiers cause military incidents. They leave diplomacy to the diplomats. A German officer would shave off his moustache to show that he had a scar. That's just one of the points where we differ, my dear Nurse Erna. Will you like me with a moustache, Miss Hunter? How do you know you can grow one? Oh, nurse Erna, Nurse Erna, is it permissible to insult the <laughs> patients? What view, if any, do you take of my great moustache plan? You are the moustache type. Thank you. Oh. She's taken them away, always tidying up. Nurse Erna, where am I? Thank you. Is the British Army enjoying itself in Berlin? On the whole, yes. They had lunch yesterday in the regimental mess of the first Dragoon Guards. The Kaiser spoke and the Prince of Wales spoke. Spoke about what? Nobody could remember. When do they return to London? In a week. Would you care to accompany them? Well, they'll have a special train, surely. Oh, we could always try. Or you could stay another five weeks and come back with me. Great care must be taken of me. No doubt. No answer at all. Will you or won't you? If you stay on, you may get another job. We'll see. Oh, we're going to play cards. I asked Nurse Erna to fix up a bridge for her. We don't want to get bored. The head nurse is finding a suitable couple for you to play with after dinner. But you must not stay up after 10.30 at the very late. I promise you, Nurse Erna. You do play. Only whist. Oh, it's simple. Let's have a trial game of double dummy. I will bring a lamp. You're a good pupil, Edith. That's 32,000 pounds I owe you. Toss your doubler quits. Agreed. Well, what is it? Heads. No, I mean tails. Heads, it is. Ha! <laughs> We're quits. <laughs> have cigarettes. But please do remember, Mr. Candy, that smoking is fat for you. Ich liebe Sie, Nurse Erna. You are an angel, Nurse Erna. Oh, there are our guests. Would you get them in? Frau von Kalteneck, Oberleutnant Kretschmer Schuldorf, Miss Hunter, Mr. Candy. Ich hoffe, Sie werden sich gut unterhalten. How do you do? How do, you do? Catch my shoe off. Yes, I know. Um 10 Uhr werde ich Sie wieder abholen. Danke sehr. I'm very glad you've come. I promised Theo to make a little speech. He would like to have made it himself. Uh, very much. Theo knows only two English expressions. Very much and not very much. <laughs> Stimmt's, Theo? <laughs> very much. He would like to have come before. Very much. Only he was afraid nobody could translate to you what he says. Miss Hunter speaks German. She sprechen German. Was wirklich nicht ist, Fräulein. Sie reden Deutsch. Oh, nicht sehr gut. Oh, ich finde, Sie reden ausgezeichnet. Theo has heard that you were took part in the South Africa campaign. Yeah, yeah. And that you have won a very famous medal. Yeah, uh, Victoria... Uh... Victoria Cross. <laughs> yeah, of course. He envies you because a German officer knows about war only from the newspapers. And mostly wrongly. And mostly wrongly. Let's have a drink, shall we? Sherry? I would love a glass of sherry. Would you like sherry? Uh, not very much. Port? What's name Sie gewesen, for that? She and I, we drink Kirchwater. Oh, oh <laughs> Kirschwasser. Yes, that's right, Kirchwater. <laughs> Do you like it? Uh, very, very much. <laughs> <laughs> Let me help you. Do you know Berlin, Mr. Candy? The Hotel Kaiserhof, the British Embassy, the Café Hohenzollern, and the gymnasium of the barracks of the Second Uhlans. I hope we shall be able to show you more than that. And a cigarette, Oberleutnant? Push, my thank you, sir. Do you like the opera, concerts? I prefer riding, hunting, or polo. I adore hunting, and I love sports. Interessieren Sie sich für Sport, Mrs. Voller? Nein, ich habe keinerlei Talent für Sport. <laughs> Cut the partners. You and I. Sie und ich. <laughs> Furchtbar nett. Ich hoffe, wir spielen jeden Abend. What's he say? I hope we shall be able to play every night. Oh, yes, rather. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yes, eh? Hey. Oh, baby face, I want you a moment. What is it? Those nursing home accounts? Yeah. Would you kindly explain what the deuce this item means? Forty packs of playing cards? Oh, there. Well, it's enough for the casino at Monte Carlo. Oh, I know. I spoke to Miss Hunter about it, but she says the evenings were so long, there's nothing much to do at Stolfin's Day in the winter. Very well. Don't you ever do any work? What? Oh, this. First time this year. I draw it mild. Well, don't catch a cold. These nursing homes are an expensive business. Is Miss Hunter returning to England? As far as I know. Well, not at our expense, I hope. Good heavens, no. She was going anyway. Hmm. Well, so is Candy, for that matter. I yeah. know. Had a return ticket. It's expired. Very well. Buy him a new one. right -o. And get Candy to give you that old ticket of his. We'll claim a refund at Cook's. Half an hour, those things belong to tail. Put them at the alarm clock. How's your own packing going? Not fast. Well, you'd better hurry up, then. Are you all right? Don't you be so sure. We've only got half an hour. We're going to call from the embassy first. Stop mooning about. I'm not mooning about. Keep your hair on. <laughs> I say, old girl, what's up? Edith, I say, what's the matter? It's not because I didn't call for you yesterday, is it? You know Frau von Kultnick left for the south last night. Did she? You knew she was going. I'd forgotten. Well, it's not my fault if you don't like horses, is it? We went to see her riding stable. She's got some fine beasts. They're a bit fat, though. I say, old girl, do stop crying. Supposing somebody came in. Nobody will come in. Look. I promise to take you out the first night we get back to London. Her Majesty's Theatre, the last of the dandies. They say it's an awfully good show. But the paper said... What that... paper? What do you mean? That what's making you cry? No, the paper said there was a play at Her Majesty's called yeah. Ulysses. <laughs> Overnight, non-crash, while Shultog returns your books, Mr. Candy. He is on his way to see you. Oh, I'm sorry. You'd better. I'll meet you in the hall. Well, what am I to do with them? I don't read German. Miss Hunter got them for me. You can present them to our library. Clever, Nurse Erna. But I must write my name in them. So, Clive Candy's name will live forever in a corner at Stobensee. May I come in? Come in, my old horse, my old steeplechaser. Who is Edith? Packing. Is it packing? Is it? Is it packing? Well, of course. And see how much longer see? Oh, is I a week or a uh, uh, two weeks? Two week. Yeah. Um, Clive. Uh, Edith, come here, translate. I can translate. Nein, danke, das ist viel zu wichtig. Don't interrupt Edith, she'll never be ready. Shall I fetch Miss Hunter? Ich müssen call at embassy, old man. Get my ticket nach London. Ja. Uh, bitte, wollen Sie das nicht, die Fräulein herholen? Drink? Nein, uh, not now. All right. What the blazes is up with everybody today? Clive, you and I, friends, yes or no? Well, of course we're friends. We must dwell again. Where's your dictionary, old man? You must have got two pages stuck together. I love your... What for question? Your Miss Hunter. Say that again. I love your Miss Hunter. Your cuckoo. No, no, I, 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 nein, cuckoo. Uh, you cuckoo, because Miss Hunter. Loves me. Congratulations. When did it happen? Why don't I know about it? Uh, no duel. Duel? I? Ich fight anyone who tried to stop it. Now will you have a drink? Double drink. You know, old boy, Edith was never my fiance. Ah, fiance. That is the word that's not finished. No, not my fiance. Lovely girl, sweet girl, but 
Not much use. Fixed. Uh, bottom up. Come in! <coughs> oh, let us have now. Come and have a drink. Where's the fiance? She finished. Was she finished, come on. She won't come down. Then we go up. Come yeah. on, Jail. Moment, moment, moment. The flash. Um, the glasses. Child, I feel like a proud father. Do you, Clive? Why? I have to give you away, don't I? Who told you? I told. In fluent double German. Das einzige Wort, das ich nicht finden konnte, war fie, fie, fiance. Fiance, yeah. A toast. Here's to the happiness of my fiance, who was never my fiance, and here's to the man who tried to kill me before he was introduced to me. Prost. Prost. May I kiss the bride? Why ask? I did not ask. <laughs> Goodbye, Clive. Goodbye, Edith, old girl. I hope we'll meet again sometime. I'm sure we shall. Now, listen to me, you son of a gun. You won't understand a word of what I'm going to say, but I came to Berlin to find a rat, and I found two of the grandest people I've ever met. I leave to you, you Prussian stiff neck, you, this girl in trust. And if you don't take care of her, I'll raise the whole of England against you. The Navy will steam up your stinking stulpency, and I'll lead the army down under the linden, and we'll... Clive, my English is not very much, but my friendship for you is very much. I hope it's taught you a damn good lesson, Clandy. Yes, sir. The trouble with you young fellas is you always want to go changing everything. And what's the result? You spend all your leave in a nursing home full of foreigners. You cost the Treasury a lot of money. You make the Foreign Office very cross. Yes, very cross. And what do you get for it? Your beauty is spoiled. You weren't any fashion plate before. I'd be surprised if any woman had looked twice at you now. So would I, sir. When you were here in January, I told you very clearly it was not your concern, it was an embassy job. Well, sir, I thought I'd take a chance. A chance? A chance? You can't afford to take a chance with your career, my boy. You are in the army as a career, aren't you? Not for five minutes. You were putting up a pretty good show. You go barging in on this nonsense, and you come very near to getting yourself kicked out. You don't want to get kicked out, do you? No, sir. Well, let me tell you one thing. Don't bother your head with things you don't understand and you won't go far wrong. Never go off at half cock. Keep cool, keep your mouth shut, and avoid politicians like the plague. That's the way to get on in the army. Thank you, sir. Care to dine at my club tonight? Sorry, sir, I'm taking someone to the theater. Pretty? I haven't met her yet, sir. Yeah, still a bit cracked, my boy. Well, I hope you improve as you get older. And cheer up, my boy. Yes, sir. in hollow hell is heard, whose act is lightning out of thunder word, a boon, a boon that I compassion find for one the most unhappy of mankind. How is he named? Ulysses, he who planned to take the tarred city of Troyland. What wouldst thou? This, that he at last may view the smoke of his own fire of curling blue. Where abides the man? Calypso this long while detains him in her languorous ocean isle. Father of gods, this man hath stricken blind my dear son Polyphemus. 
and with wine, with roaring waves, my Mila can be hurled from sea to sea and dashed about the world. Peace, children, from your shrill reviling cease. Hermes, command Calypso to release Ulysses and to waft him overseas. Ulysses shall return. Cloud gatherer, stay. Yet canst thou work him mischief on the way. There he touch at last his native shore. Ulysses must abide one labor more. Yes, thank you. Where's the bar? Darling, do control yourself. And breathing, pace amid the breathless dead, the track of terror and the slope of doom. I say, there's the old Shuggy. Really, darling? Well, remember, sir, she snared the spell. Shuggy. But his deep home is hungering still. Shuggy. Oh, oh, father, in thy youth, didst feel at least for mortal women rule. To Lida, Leto, Danny, we are told, did show thee on occasion ten... The girl with Clive, darling, do you know her? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. Well, darling, who is she? I believe he met her sister in Berlin. Darling, why all this mystery? Who is she? Uh, my niece is governess. A Miss Hunter. One will never see Sybil Gilpin out without her mother. And with Hoppy, too. Oh, didn't you know, Mr. Candy? They are married. Hoppy and Sybil? Over a month ago. The family were quite taken by surprise. It was very romantic and sudden. And they met here in this very theater. I know. I seem to be a born matchmaker. Hello, Pebble. Master Clyde. Aunt is asleep. All right, don't disturb her. I didn't feel like going to the club this evening. You're not sick, Master Clyde. No. I say, Pebble, how did you feel when you buried Mr. Pebble? Oh, it wasn't so bad at the time, Master Clyde. There was so much to do. It was after that it got bad, if you understand me. Mm. I hope you haven't come from a burying, sir. No, from the theatre. But it was the same thing, in a way. Was it a sad play? On the contrary, it was a musical play. Is the bed in the den made up? No, sir. But it won't take a minute if you don't mind sleeping in blankets. There isn't time to wear the sheets. Lady Margaret has made some change. Oh! What is going on down there? Am I staying? I suppose so, since there's no man here to throw you out. Hmm. I say, don't put up my South African heads. I don't know. They don't look half so bad, do they? No. Pebble, stop fussing like an old hen and go to your bed. Yes, my lady. Good night, Master Clyde. Good night. Now, even money that some catastrophe has brought you here. You're on. Debts? No. A woman? <laughs> Not exactly. Explain. I went to the theatre tonight. Alone? With a girl. And why, pray, is she? Not exactly. Oh, it was nothing to do with her. Hmm, perhaps. See anyone there you knew? I met Hoppy and Sybil Gilpin. They're married. Why not? A very suitable match. He has money and she has land and neither of them has any brains. You surely weren't in love with her. With Sybil? Oh, no. I'm glad of that. She has the muscles of a prize fighter. She'd hit Hoppy one day. Hoppy could give her a couple of stone. Oh, she'll soon make that up, I assure you. Who is this girl you took to the theatre tonight? A Miss Hunter. I met her sister in Berlin. Is she nice? Very. I mean the sister. Which sister? The one that stayed in Berlin. Then the one in London is not so nice, I take it. No. I see. Now, listen, Clive. I have 18 rooms here, a bone idle staff eating their heads off, and when you come home from South Africa, you go straight to your club. I know, it's awful. I want you to remember that whatever you do, and wherever you are, you've always got a home here. And whatever you shoot, there's always room for them here, too. Look how much room there is.
This is Dead Cow Crossroads, sir. Question is whether that's the church with the double tower or the estaminated form. Damn it, Murdoch, you're supposed to know the road. I know it at night, sir. In the daytime, it looks different. Eh? You got a scent? Yes, sir. Yon's on road, sir. I can smell the two horses or sappers didn't bury. Park away, then. Park away, sir. Marvellous eye for loot, Van Zyl. Lad from the English in the Boer War, sir. <laughs> well, where'd you get them? Off Jerry's. Eleven of them brought in an hour ago. Lord knows where they stole them. They were using them for camouflage against the aircraft. RTO, uh, you please, uh, something? That way, so quiet. The Yanks are down there. How about it, Paddy? I'm afraid the line's down between us and mile 14, sir. I can send a runner. What message, sir? Tell him to hold a place on the leave train. When can I leave here? Not before dark. That plastering the road between 17 and 19 with shrapnel. Right. Someone look after Murdoch? Nobby. Very good, sir. Mind the leave, sir. Paddy, get that runner away. Yes, sir. If any of you have any important letters or messages home, I'll take them. Thank you, sir. Paddy, just now I'll see the prisoners again. All right, sir. What are these prisoners? Ulans, second regiment. That's all I've got out of them so far. I'd like to question them. Certainly, sir. Paddy, second regiment of Ulans. Sir? Bring in the prisoners and tell the orderly to light the lamp. Any officer with them? I cannot. Not so lucky. Where'd you have them? Floating down the river early this morning. I had a boom across and netted them like salmon. They had a hundred pounds of dynamite with them. My guess is they were after the new pontoon bridge below San Mangi. How the devil did they get to know about that? They took one of our patrols prisoner day before yesterday. Are you suggesting that our fellows talk? The Germans know how to make them talk. Oh. Well, if they are, they're cracking, my dear chap. It's a sure sign. Nobody starts to fight foul till he sees he can't win any other way. I quite believe, Hindenburg, who I heard said the other day that until now, Germany has used her arms with honor. I admit he said nothing about her legs. <laughs> Get that off to brigade in the morning. Certainly, sir. Do any of you know Oberst Kretschmer Schuldorf? Don't play deaf. He was an Oberst in your regiment the last time I heard of him. Oberst Kretschmer Schuldorf, 2nd Regiment of Uhlans. Which of you can speak English? Hey, you spoke English an hour ago. Answer the brigadier. I do speak. Ah. Oh. Now, listen to me. We don't use the same methods that I hear you use on your prisoners, but I assure you we have means to find out what we want. What was this explosive found on you intended for? I don't know. Don't lie. I do not know. You took three of our men prisoners two days ago. No. Then how did you know about the bridge? I know nothing about a bridge. Then why were you carrying dynamite? Quite safe to go now, sir. Your car's waiting. Won't you stay for dinner, sir? What have you got? Macaroni. We found it in the cellar. Beastly stuff. And the usual corned horse. Oh, I think I'll take my chance at Dupuis. Pity I've got to go. I'd like to another shot at those prisoners. Oh, I think I've got the idea, sir. I'll tackle them for you. Right. Make your report to Brigade. Very good, sir.
Wallace. I am in command here now, and I know how to deal with you, scum. I'm not a simple English gentleman. I'm a simple South African. And I can assure you that I have means to get what I want. What was the dynamite for? How many of you got away? What happened to the three men you took prisoners? 30 seconds to reply. Michel 10. Pont Saint Michel 10. 835. 835. Hello! Hello! Damn it! No. Lousy line's dead, sir. I can't get Beechwood. Yeah, well, keep trying. Right. Yeah, and what do you want? I'm Brigadier General Candy. I'm sorry, sir. Sit, Sit down and take the load off your feet. I couldn't see your grass for the mud. What can I do for you? Yeah, You're keep... the railway transport officer. I run trains, if that's what you mean. That is, when there are any trains to run. Did you get my chit? Jake, will you, for the Lord's sake, get me through to Beechwood? The Colonel's having kittens. Try the other circuit. Check, you sir. said chit? Yes. What's a chit? A message, man, a message. I want transport to London. It's urgent. Hasn't been any message through here since I've been on duty. See what we can do for you. Jake, get RTO at Amy Le Bon, will you? Okay, yes, sir. Colonel. Yes. Yes, we're trying to get through, sir. We're trying the other circuit now. Yes, I'll let you know. Merry little madhouse we've got here, isn't it? Yes, very. When does my train leave? Where do I change? And where can I get some food? I thought so. Thanks very much. Yeah, that's just what I thought. You'll have to go through that to Amy Le bon. I've come from Amy Le bon to catch a train here. My motor car is stuck What's in the that? mud, so don't... What, Colonel? The hell you say? Well, thanks a lot. That's that. What's what? A German delegation is on its way to see General Fush. They're going to sue for an armistice. Yippee! Nonsense. German propaganda, old trick to put us off our guard. What about my train? There's not a train or a track or a locomotive to pull one, sir. In this war, I've seen ammunition dumps without ammunition, field kitchens with no cooks, motor cars with no petrol to run them on. So I suppose I shouldn't be surprised to find a railway transport officer without trains. But let me tell you this, young man, that in the Boer War or in Somaliland, this sort of inefficiency wouldn't have been tolerated for a second. Not for a second. Now, where can I get some grub? A crown of thorns is good for a handout at almost any hour. What is it, a pub? Pub, sir? I don't get you. Uh, oh, dash it, we don't speak the same language. Uh, a cafe? No, sir, it's a convent. It's on the way to Ami Le Bon. Show me the way, will you? I think I hear Armstrong coming with a bathtub now. Armstrong, I want you to take the general here over to the Crown of Thorns. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, General. I sure will do that. It's kind of damp on foot, but I'll get you there, General. If I'm bored, sir. You're off. Poor show I couldn't get a train tonight. Wasted 24 hours of my leave. You can step on it, Armstrong. The general's in a hurry. I sure will do that. Well, goodbye, General. What were those other wars he was talking about, Captain? The Boer War and the Somme something. I never heard of them. Those weren't wars. Those were just summer maneuvers. <laughs> Here we are, General. The Convent of the Crown of Thorns. Let me give you a hand. I can manage. There you go. Bonsoir, Sissy Jacqueline. Bonsoir, Napoleon. I brought you a real live colonel. Je suis un général anglais. Good night, General. Bon appétit. Good night, Sister Jacqueline. Bonne nuit, Napoleon. <laughs> que désirez-vous, mon général? Merci, madame. Les Américains, moi, je suis... J'ai... 
Manger. Monsieur le général a mangé quelque chose qui lui aurait fait mal. Oui, manger. Mais venez donc, mon général. Vous pas vous tourmenter, mon général, on vous guérira bien vite. Ma mère, il y a un général anglais qui vient d'arriver. Je viens avec toi, mon petit. Macron, le général est malade. Donc... Bonsoir, madame. Good evening, General. Ah, Matron, for heaven's sake, tell your girls to sit down. Sit down, nurses, sit down. D'abord, il faut lui enlever toutes ces choses mouillées. And your coat. Oh, General, you have fallen on your feet. I was beginning to think so. <laughs> I have 62 fisty trained nurses straight from England and all dying to nurse someone. Now, what's the trouble? Trouble, Matron? Well, the nun said you'd eaten something. She got it wrong. I, I want to eat. I'm hungry. Oh! <laughs> yes. Ce qu'il veut manger. <laughs> Soyez le bienvenu, général. Merci, ma mère. Il va rester avec nous. Bien, ma mère. Oui. Well, that's settled then. We should be delighted to have you with us. Thank you. You've been in the front line? I suppose you have. I was with the Italians. I was lucky. I came through Caporetto without a scratch. Good heavens, Matron. What insect powder do you use? Oh. <laughs> Come and sit over here, General, will you? Move up a bit, my dear. Unless he has a good place. Yeah, Madam. Could you pass the water, sir? We have macaroni. Splendid. Thank you, nurse. Matron, have you ever seen the Indian road trip? No, General, have you? It must be an incredible sight. Yes, but I've never heard of anybody who's seen it unless he heard he was going to see it first. I beg your pardon, I don't quite understand. You hear about a thing, you hope to see it, and then you see it. <laughs> yes, General, will you excuse me? One moment, Matron. Do you know that girl over there? I'm afraid I don't. I only met them here at the station. Come along, nurses. Bed, everyone. Bed, everybody. Come along. Come on, Will. Who is the matron? The matron? Oui, the matron. You want to lui parler encore? Oui, parlez, quick. Restez. Je m'en vais la chercher. Nurse, do you know the name of the girl sitting at the end of that table? Dark or fair? Fair. Oh, I don't remember. Can you describe her better? Well, she was fair. I didn't see the colour of her eyes. Uh, Slim. Sorry. Well, it might be anyone. Excuse me, General. Where do you come from tonight? What detachment are you? Yorkshire. West Riding, most of us. Good night, General. Good night. How long now? Not long, no, sir. You've said that ten separate times. I know, sir. Well, hurry, the train leaves at 10.30. I know, sir. We need extra time at Amy LeBron. I'm going to GHQ. I know, sir. Stop talking like an infernal parrot, Murdoch. How do you know? I was told, sir. Who told you? Major Van Zyl's Batman, sir. What did he say? That you were up in the air, sir, because the Major had got valuable information from the Jerry's, the prisoners, sir. Your misinformation, Murdoch, is typical. Thank you, sir. Four pages of confessions not worth Kretschmer's shoulder. There can't be two of them with a name like that, eh, Mother? No, sir. You don't know what on earth I'm talking about. No, sir. Haven't I told you about the time I was in Berlin in 1902? When he grew your moustache, sir. And yet you can't remember the name Kretschmer Schuldorf. You know, you ought to bequeath that brain of yours to Guy's Hospital. Oh, I remember now, sir. He married the girl. Yes. He married the girl. Last night, Murdoch, I saw a girl, a nurse, straight from England. I've never seen a more striking resemblance. She must have been a very common type of girl, sir. The young lady in Berlin, I mean. She was a most uncommon. What the devil do you mean, Murdoch? Well, sir, there was that girl and Philip. You remember, he went nine times. And there was that girl in the group out of the bystander. We lost it in the big push, didn't we? And then there's... Dispatch rider coming, sir. General Candy? Yes? Urgent message from Major Van Zyl, sir. Came over the wire from mile 14. They've mended the line, sir. Any answer, sir?
No, no answer. Anything wrong with her? Murdoch, the war is over. Has it? The Germans have accepted the terms of the armistice. Hostilities cease at 10 o'clock. It's nearly that now. Murdoch, do you know what this means? I do, sir. Peace. I can go home. Everybody can go home. For me, Murdoch, it means more than that. It means that right is might, after all. The Germans have shelled hospitals, bombed open towns, sunk neutral ships, used poison gas, and we won. Clean fighting, honest soldiering have won. God bless you, Murdoch. Sir. Oh dear. Don't listen to them. Now, you listen to me. There I was asleep. You'd never seen me before. You never even spoke to me then. How could you be so sure? Can I ask you a question first? You're wriggling. All right, fire away. How can you be so sure? I'm 20 years older than you are, and I'm a soldier. When other people are thanking God the war is over, I'm going to the war office to ask, where is another war where you can use me? You asked me that once before, and I told you. I'm asking you again, because I want to hear it again. And again. I'm marrying you because I want to join the army and see the world. I'm marrying you because I love watching you play polo. I'm marrying you for 50 different reasons. And they all mean that's how I imagine my future husband. Same here. That's how I imagine my future wife. Gong's the final appeal, darling. We must go. We've got the bishop for lunch. I hope he's tender. And now, in conclusion, I. Uh, oh, yes. I should like to say a few words to General Kelly. We members of the church militant can admire the heroes of the war, but in our hearts, we are men of peace. And so I am glad to have met you for the first time, as I did, sir on a simple and heartwarming occasion, rather than at some military ceremonial. When I first heard that a general of the British Army was arranging a ball for the benefit of those nurses of the West Riding 
who had taken part in the four-year struggle, I said to myself, there is a man whose heart is in the right place. And I am glad to be able to tell you that one result is that the sum of 131 pounds, two and sixpence will be handed over to the War Nurses Benevolent Fund. My Lord Bishop, I want to make a confession. I first saw Barbara in Flanders on the last night of the war. She was a nurse among 70 other nurses. I never knew her name, but I found out that most of the nurses came from Yorkshire, the West Riding. And of course, she was a nurse. So I thought to myself, well, Yorkshire's a big place, my Lord Bishop. So I thought, how can I find a nurse in Yorkshire? You understand who I'm driving at, I suppose, what I mean. I understand exactly what you mean, darling. window is the den. Wrong. Next floor's the den. That's the bathroom. Oh, look! Seps, they're here. Is yon greyhead Murdoch? His idea of greeting the conquering hero, I suppose. <laughs> I think I shall like Murdoch. And I know I shall like this house. Clive, let this whole house be our den where we can always crawl. Whether we return with rich spoils or badly mauled from our rovings. Or just to change our spots. Aunt Margaret would have loved you for that. Mm. It's a fine, solid looking property, like you. <laughs> Clive, you won't change, will you? And don't ever leave this house. No fear. Even if there's a second flood, this house shall always stand on its solid foundations. And we'll have a private lake in the basement. That's a promise. You stay just as you are till the floods come. Till the floods come. And this is a lake. And this is a lake. I'm sorry, Mum, Mrs. Candy. I was at the top of the house. I wasn't expecting you to early. Well, Murdoch, this is the wife. So you're Murdoch. Yes, madam. First time I've ever heard him answer anything but yes, sir. Everything is under control, Mum. I have the telephone installed, sir. You have? Good. The agency have got a lot of cooks for you to see, Mum, but I've got plenty well, of flour. come along. Let's get inside. Yes, sir. We'll have some fun with this. All the tradespeople have called, Mum, and they'll be calling again for your orders. That's all right, Murdoch. Not staying this time. Off tonight. Yes, sir. Eight weeks, Paris. When we come back, we'll put our feet up for a bit and have a big party. Yes, sir. I've got your letters from the club, sir, on the wee tray. Oh. I'm so sorry, Murdoch. You took such a lot of trouble. Oh, that's all right, Mum. We're used to it. I told the porter the general wouldn't be using the club so much in future, Mum. Oh, well, what did he say? Oh. Well, go on, Murdoch. I can bear it. Uh, yes, Mum. He said, they all say that at first, Mum. <laughs> I say, Barbara, here's an answer from the Prisoners of War Committee. Oh, they found him? Yes, Oberst Kretschmar Schuldorf, second regiment of the of Guard. Ah, well, Camp 7, Hardwick Hall, Derbyshire. Poor old tail. Darling? Mm-hmm? Let's postpone Paris. I'd love to meet him.
busy, sir, from the Commandant's office. No answer. Excuse me, sir, but I don't... No answer! He said no answer, sir. No answer? What else? Nothing, sir. He refused to come? If that was a message, madam. Why is it very much printed like that? It was a joke we had. Where was the obest? Listening to the band, sir. All right, Higgins. I was thinking how odd they are. They're queer. For years and years they're writing and dreaming beautiful music and beautiful poetry. All of a sudden they start a war. They sink undefended ships, shoot innocent hostages and bomb and destroy whole streets in London, killing little children. And then they sit down in the same butcher's uniform and listen to Mendelssohn and Schubert. Something horrid about that. Don't you think so, Clive? Mm. Perhaps I should have written in German. He understands English. They all learn English while they're here. Major Davis, do you mind if we went down and had a try? Perhaps it was because of the music. There's an interval now. Well, by all means, try, sir. But Mrs. Candy had better remain. Oh, yes. I can't understand it. I've written to him before the war, and he's written to me. They stopped English lessons on the 11th of November. On Armistice Day. Oh, burst and twitch my shoe, though. Over there. Theo. Candy, I hope your wife will forgive me. I'm afraid you didn't read the invitation, old man. Oh, bachelor party, eh? Well, if I'd realized your charming wife wasn't here, I shouldn't have been into the hurry. Never mind, we'll find you something. Oh, don't worry, I've had dinner on the train. I've come straight from Victoria. Me? No, I'm on duty. Come on, have a glass of crap. This is Brigadier General Candy's residence. May I speak to the general, please? And whom may we ask is speaking? Tell him his over scratch my shoulder speaking from Victoria Station and tell him I'm leaving London tonight. D do you mind repeating the name, sir? Over scratch my shoulder. Thank you, sir. Couldn't he phone tomorrow? Where is he speaking from? Victoria Station, sir. He's leaving tonight, he said. What name? Sounded like Ranch Bar or something, sir. Kretschmer Schuldorf. That's it, sir. Murdoch, that brain of yours ought to be in a bottle. Theo. Yes, it's me, Theo. Ah, you're my friend. <laughs> 
Yes, I'm going home. Is there such a thing left in Germany? Hmm? Oh, yeah, there are scores of us here. Can't you hear them? We have an extra train. It leaves at 11.30. Yes, yes, we are on the guard. Uh, Clive, I may still call you Clive now you're a general. Cut the cackle. What have you got to say for yourself? Look, I am sorry. I'm terribly sorry because of our meeting at the camp. I was a silly fool. Yes, and I felt I had to tell you before I leave. I must ring off now, Clive. Uh, good luck to you all. Major Davis! Yes? Come here a moment, will you? I'll send you back to Derbyshire if you're not careful. Now, you just sit tight and we'll come and get you. All right, all right. I won't run away. Uh, what's your matter, Lieutenant? You Prussian stiffnik, the only way to get you is to kidnap you. Now, let's have a look at you. Ah, uh, you've worn well, old chef. You've still got my mark, I see. And you still need a moustache. <laughs> when were you captured? July 16. You were lucky you missed the worst of it. I would prefer to have been unlucky. That's what you think. Have you heard from home? Have you got any children? How about Edith? What shall I answer first? Edith is all right, as far as I know. And, uh, yes, we have two children. Boys, eh? No. Now, that one's exactly like Edith. Car, yes, he is, isn't he? Oh, I almost wish we had no children. What? Oh, what future can children have in a beaten country? Oh, you Germans, you're all a bit crazy. You wait till you meet Barbara. She'll tell you what's what. Who's Barbara? My wife. Oh, of course you don't know I'm married. You'll get a bit of a shock when you see her. Shock? I'm sure she's charming. Oh, I don't mean that. You wait and see. Of course you won't see her. She's gone out to the theater with her mother. Never mind. Now, have you got any more snapshots? Tell me all about yourself. In fact, neither of them were much good. Gentlemen? Uh, this is my friend, Oberst Tretschmar Schuldorf. Sir Archibald Blair, shining light of the Foreign Office. How do you do, Oberst? General Betteridge. How do you do? I've heard about you, Oberst. General Keane. How do? Major Michael Cornish and his brother, Major... John. John Cornish. Admiral Sir Merton Barrow of the so-called Senior Service. Commodore Brendan Crester. Ditto. Major Davis, you know. Intimately. <laughs> Colonel Hopwell, aide to the governor of Gibraltar. How do you do, my dear fella? Sir William Rendell on the Viceroy staff. How do you do? George Metcalf of Uganda. Sir John Bembridge, just back from Jamaica. How do you do, sir? Colonel Mannering, known to the press as the uncrowned king of Southern Arabia. How do you do? Mr. Christopher Wynne of Bradford, England, my father-in-law. How are you? How do you do? Embodiment of all the solid virtues. <laughs> Sit down, Theo. What will you have to drink? Uh, port, please. Port? Pass the port, no? It has to go around the clock, over. Cigar, cigarette? Uh, cigarette, please. They're both on the table. Turkish or Virginia? Oh, Thousands Virginia. of them. Yeah, Virginia. I think you'll find those. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, I don't suppose you'll remember me. But we met in Berlin in 02. Oh, did we? Ah, Barstow. Colonel Barstow of the Royal Air Force, over stretch my shoulder. How do you do? Don't get up. Thank you. I'm glad to see you on your way home, at Barstow. Thank you very much, sir. Can't imagine anything more awful than being a prisoner of war in England. I don't think it is much good anywhere. <laughs> oh, my dear fellow. In this country, people poke their nose into everything. Did you get any letters from spinsters? Yes, we have. Yes, I thought so. They started a campaign to write to prisoners of war. Not our taps, mind you. Oh, it wasn't so bad. We had books, concerts, lectures. I'm sure your camp was well run. German organization is very thorough. A bit too thorough for us. <laughs> <laughs> was the cooking good? It was English cooking. That's <laughs> <laughs> got a sense of humor. My daughter Joyce started a campaign to better the food of the German prisoners. I remember the government was also charged with overfeeding them. <laughs> oh, we're well, not too bad. Drink up, Dale. <laughs> Gentlemen, your health. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. By the way, what have you done with old Tiger Bloomfield? At Victoria. He's in the bar of the Grosvenor. He was hostage for the others. Now, where is the sense of guarding officer prisoners? Nearly a year after the fighting's over. I imagine it is more to protect us. Protect against what? People. What people? Your people. How do you mean? 
They can't be adjusted from war to peace as easily as you can, gentlemen. Oh. I think you'll find that's not true. Do you mean to say that our people would attack you in that uniform? I tried to kill Englishmen in this uniform. My dear fellow, that's rather a gloomy point of view, isn't it? You've got the wrong end of the stick, old man. Of course, the war's over. Yes, there's nothing to bear malice about. You're a decent fellow, and so are we. I'm not a decent fellow. I'm a beggar, like the rest of all the professional soldiers in our army. The beaten country can't have an army, so what are we going to do? I imagine there'll be a great deal to do. But not for us. We know a bit about horses. We can become stable boys. You'll feel differently when you're home again. Mm, home. But what will the home be like? Another prison camp. Who says so? Aren't we going to have foreign troops occupying our cities for years? For years? I like that. I've never heard a man more wrong than you are. We don't want to make beggars of you. And we're a trading nation. We must have countries to trade with. But surely you realize that the reconstruction of Germany is essential to the peace of Europe. I can't see our taxpayers keeping an army in your country, can you, Candy? No, of course not. Read the papers, men, the English papers. We can't ask you to be our friends if we rob you and humiliate you, too. That's how we all feel, eh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to be friends. We want to trade with Germany, said one. The general said, we don't want to keep an army just to occupy your country. A general. Oh, they are children. Boys playing cricket. They win the shirts off our backs and now they want to give them back. Because the game is over. War is the most unpopular thing in England. They are already organizing pacifist societies. Their newspapers are anti-militant. Wait a moment. Here we can get to something. Anti-military. This childlike stupidity is raft for us. In a sea of despair. Do you know what my friend the General Candy said? Don't you worry, old chap. We soon have German on their feet again. I think we made an impression on him. And the last thing I said to him was, my dear fella, don't you worry. We'll soon have Germany on her feet again. And he believed it? Tail, I believe so. I hope so. Darling. Oh. Don't hum. Was I humming? Mm -hmm. It's a little habit you've got. Oh. Well, what do I do if I don't hum? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Theodore Kretschmar Schuldo. Yeah. This way, please. Your registration book and identity card, please. Yes. Sit down. When did you arrive in this country? The 6th of June, 35. From? Paris, France. I arrived in France the 15th of January, 34. From Germany? Yes. Why did you leave Germany? My outlook of life is against the Nazis. Most refugees left Germany early in 1933 when Hitler came to power. I had nothing to fear from Hitler. At least I... I thought so. It took me eight months to find out I was wrong. Rather a long time. Don't you think so? Please, I mean no offense, but you in England took five years. Right, right, right. Have you been in England before? Yes. I was prisoner of war in the last war. I see you were an officer. When did you leave the army? In 1920. Eight out of ten officers had to retire when the German army ceased to exist as a large army, I mean. You prefer the existence of a large army? Not anymore. In 20, I chose a new profession. I became a military chemist. I worked for 13 years in a factory in Mannheim. Are you married? My wife is dead. Children? Two. I have no connection with them. They are good Nazis. As far as any Nazi can be called good. I'm afraid, Mr. Krishmar Schuldorf, that doesn't sound very much in your favor. I've tried to answer correctly. Personally, I don't doubt your good faith, but I'm here to safeguard my country's interests. You may be an anti-Nazi, you may not. In times like these, one enemy in our midst can do more harm than ten across the channel. If you were here to work for the enemy, what would you tell me now? Exactly the same that you were a friend of England and that our enemy was your enemy. I know this is hard on those who are really with us, but it should be their best assurance that this time we mean business. If you are a friend, our precautions are your precautions and our interests, your interests, because our victory will be your victory. Is there anything else you'd like to say? If you don't mind, sir. No, go ahead. In earlier years, the most important principle of my life used to be never lie, always tell the truth. Very good principle. I hope you stick to it. Oh, I have not told a lie, but I... I also have not told the truth. The refugee soon learns that there's a big difference between the two. The truth about me is that I'm a tired old man who came to this country because he's homesick. Oh, please don't stare at me like that, sir. I'm all right in the head. You know that after the war, we had very bad years in Germany. We got poorer and poorer. Every day, retired officers and school teachers were caught shoplifting. Money lost its value. The price of everything rose except of human beings. We read in the papers, of course, that the after-war years were bad everywhere, that crime was increasing and that the honest citizens were having a hard job to put the gangsters in jail. Well, I needn't tell you, sir, that in Germany, the gangsters finally succeeded in putting the honest citizens in jail. My wife was English. She would have loved to come back to England but it seemed to me that I would be letting down my country in its greatest need. And so she stayed at my side. When in summer, 33, we found that we had lost our children to the Nazi party and I was willing to come, she died. None of my sons came to her funeral. 
Heil Hitler. And then in January 35, I had to go to Berlin on a mission for my firm. Driving up in my car, I lost my way on the outskirts of the city and suddenly the landscape seemed so familiar to me. And slowly I recognized the road, the lake, and the nursing home where I spent some weeks recovering, almost 40 years ago. I stopped the car and sat still, remembering. And you see, in this very nursing home, sir, I met my wife for the first time. And I met an Englishman who became my greatest friend. And I remember the people at the station in 19, when we prisoners were sent home, cheering us, treating us like friends. The faces of a part of distinguished men round the table who tried their utmost to comfort me when the defeat of my country seemed to me unbearable. And very foolishly, I remember the English countryside, the gardens, the green lawns, the weedy rivers and the trees she loved so much. And a great desire came over me to come back to my wife's country. And this serves the truth. Haven't you got anyone in this country who knows you well? A British uh, citizen? The doorman at the chemical works were offered my services. The police officers at the aliens department at Bow Street. Constable. Don't you know Major General Clive Wincanby? Yes, I used to know him. Did you ask him to come here and testify on your behalf? Yes, I did send him a letter, but I suppose he... My dear chap, let's have a good look at you. By God, you've kept your figure better than I have. A bit of a bay window, huh? You see, sir, I wouldn't be surprised if this fellow really disliked us. He comes to England twice in his life. The first time he's a prisoner, and the second time he's just about to be one. May I talk to him, sir? I haven't seen him for 19... Uh, 20. 20 years and a bit. Afraid not here, General. We have many Kretschmar shoot-ups waiting. You mean to say that I've traveled 11 hours from... mustn't say where, and you won't allow me to have a word with the condemned man? Well, you don't have to go back this minute, do you? Tomorrow morning, sir, infernally early, too. Well, that's all right. You can talk to him all day and all night, uh, till midnight. Aliens curfew, you know. And I can take him with me? If you say you know him. Do I know him? And will stand surety for him. With everything I have, sir. Oh, it's time I was going. The night's young yet. Don't you remember curfew for aliens? Oh, yes. I have to be at home by midnight. Don't forget, sir, you have to be up at six o'clock. Early parade, eh? Aye. How lucky you are, Clive. Yes, they put me on the retired list in 35, but I knew they'd want me again. Back I went on the active list like a shot. I mean, uh, why don't you stay? I've 18 rooms. Uh, Murdo, belly run. Thank you, Clive. I'd better not. I would need a special permit anyway. Yeah. All right, Murdo, as you were. Stay a little longer. I'll send you home by car. Murdo, tell Miss Cannon to be here by quarter to twelve. Very good, sir. Who is Miss Cannon? 
Miss Cannon, my driver, MTC. Do you remember, Clive, we used to say, our armies are fighting for our women, our children, and our homes. Now the women are fighting beside the men. The children are being trained to shoot. What's left is the home. But what is the home without women and children? You never met my wife. Would you like to see a picture of her? Oh, very much. <laughs> Do you remember when that was all I was able to say in English? <laughs> very much. You got further with them than I ever got. In what respect? Tasha, don't tell me you didn't know. You what? <laughs> you make me blush. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I thought it was written all over my face when I left Berlin in 02. Don't forget, I never saw your face after you'd left. I was in love with her, your wife. She never told me. She never knew. But I seem to remember, oh, Clive, that last day in Berlin when I told you, you seemed genuinely happy. Dash it, I didn't know then. But on the train, I started to miss her. On the boat, it was worse. And by the time I got back to London, well, I got it properly. My Aunt Margaret got onto the scent straight away. Women have a nose for these sort of things. Besides, I did a stupid thing. First night back, I took out her sister. Aunt Margaret? Edith's. Oh, Martha? Yes. What is stupid about that? Thinking her sister would be like she was? Like Edith? Yes. got over it. That's just it. I never got over it. Theo, this may sound a damn silly thing to say to you, but I never got over it. You may say that she was my ideal, if she were some sort of sickening long-haired poet. All my life I've been looking for a woman like her. So now you know. I never thought it possible that an Englishman could be so romantic. And your wife, you don't mind me asking you, you loved her? Yes, dreadfully. She was exactly like Edith. I'll show her to you. She's very lovely. But uh, isn't she like Edith, eh? See the resemblance? Uh, yes. There's something very striking. But you must not forget, I saw Edith 31 years later than you. We grew old together. Do you understand? Ah, yes, of course. But she was exactly like her. Strange place to hang such a lovely picture. She wanted it. I call this my den, you know. She always knew why I used to come back here. We had a joke about it. <laughs> All my stuff's here. It'd be an awful gap without her. Have a pig, boy. It must be terrible to lose someone very dear to you in a foreign country. It wasn't a foreign country, it was Jamaica. Bye, Clive. Have a nice journey. Don't worry about anything. Everything's under control. Oh, that's fine. Will you close the door, sir, please? Oh, shut up, Murdoch. Good luck to you, Murdoch. Thank you, sir. But the general isn't taking me. I'm staying behind to look after things here. You know the way, Angela? Yes, sir. The door, sir, please. Did you see the warden? I'm the warden of this district, sir. Oh, it must be very difficult to drive in the blackout. It's not as bad as it looks, sir. I suppose you've done a lot of night driving. No, sir. I never drove before the war. 
What made you learn it? My boyfriend taught me. But not at night. Is he a good driver? Oh, first rate. He's one of the Bentley boys. Just now he walks on his two flat feet. He's a private in training. What was your job before the war, Miss Cannon? Photographic model. Oh, interesting work. Not bad. A bit hard on the feet. How did you know my name, sir? The general talked about you. Oh, did he? Mind if we try and beat the light, sir? No, not at all. Sorry, sir. Couldn't make it. You like being the general's driver? Of course. Who wouldn't? He's such an old darling. I could have done a handstand when he asked for me. Do you know, he chose me out of 700 girls, sir. Some odds, isn't it? 700 to one. Crying out loud, look at that light. He ought to be reported. Oh, come on, that'll be all night. What causes accidents? Long odds, weren't they, sir? A big upon. 700 to 1. Makes me a bit of an outsider. What is your first name, Miss Cannon? Angela. That's a lovely name. It comes from Angel, doesn't it? I think it stinks. My friends call me Johnny. Is it this crossing or the next, sir? Oh, this will do, yeah. Good night, Angela. Good night, sir. I'd like to see your boyfriend one of these days. Me too. Good night, sir. He's on his way down now. For the love of Gilgood, go and stop him as he gets out of the lift. If you let him put one whisker inside the studio, you are out. Come in. Thank you, sir. This way, General. Thank you. Sir General Wincandy. Yes. Uh, this way to Studio 5, uh, sir. Mr. Herbert Marsh would like to see you, sir. Never heard of him. Yes, but he's heard of you, sir. Has he? Good. It's this way to the Studio 5, sir. What time does my broadcast start precisely? Well, almost at once, sir. At 21.20, sir. Plenty of time. Excuse me, mister. Yes, shut out. A regular warren, eh? <laughs> yes. Beehive of industry. Yes, sir. Do you like working here? Oh, very much. You meet such interesting people. You can tell that from the programs. General Wynn Candy. I don't think I've met you, sir. No, I'm afraid I've not had that pleasure. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Cigarette? Thank you. Very snug quarters you've got here, and deep. Yes, we have to be deep these days. I quite agree. Back to the Stone Age, what? <laughs> I don't think I'll like this at the moment, if you don't mind. Bad for speaking. Makes my throat dry. General, um, I'm afraid we've been having a little trouble about your broadcast. Well, I'm used to trouble. I'm a soldier. Yes, the uh, authorities think that it's a little ill-timed and uh, might be better postponed. Think it's a little ill-timed? Who has been saying that? Why? Well, General, you know, in times of war... Don't talk to me about war. No, of course, that would be, um, grotesque. I have been asked to describe in this broadcast my views on the cause of the retreat and its aspects for the future. There they are. I've been serving my country for 44 years. What was your position before this one, sir? Eh? What? A lawyer. A lawyer? Well, I was a soldier. And before that, I suppose you were at college, and I was a soldier. And I was a soldier when you were a baby. And before you were born, sir, when you were nothing but a toss-up between a girl's and a boy's name, I was a soldier then. I'm deeply sorry, sir. I know it's not you. No, I'm afraid it isn't. I'll make the necessary inquiries through the war office. I'll have a light for this cigarette now, if you please. Yes, Malta this morning had its 25th air raid since Italy entered the war last Monday. 
It's not known if there was any damage or casualties. Cigarettes, soldier. In yesterday's raids, one civilian was killed and eight were wounded. That brings us to the end of the news and to tonight's postscript, which is given by Mr. J.B. Priestley. What on earth could have happened? Murdoch, do you think he's had an accident? I can't even think, miss. I was expecting it. Why? I've read his speech. I thought they would cancel it. It's him. Sorry about the slight delay. Now, here is Mr. Priestley. Murdoch, where can I go? The general mustn't find me here. Let me handle it. Oh, Angela. no fear. You let me out of here. Hello, Dale. If supper's ready, you can serve it, Murdoch. I'm very sorry, sir. Hmm? Why? I shouldn't be here. I asked Miss Cannon to come in. She was anxious to hear your broadcast. Cancelled at the last minute. Pity we hurried as we did, Angela. We didn't leave the war office till 5 and 20 to 9. There's a war office letter for you there, sir. It came this afternoon. Paul Reno has resigned. Peter is prime minister. Bad news. What? Oh, yes. Bad news. Sherry, sir. Uh, yes. Sherry, miss? Sherry, Mr. Sh sir? Yes, please. He's not my fiancé. Oh, pick a pal. How's your boyfriend? He's getting a commission. Oh, congratulations. I ought to go, you know. No, no. Stay a bit longer. Two. Down the hatch. Any news about your application? Turned down. Enemy alien. But you're an expert. Why didn't you ask him? He knows everybody. She was away. Then I'll serve, sir. Yes. I'm going now, sir. Will you want the car anymore? I brought an extra cover, sir. Sit down, Angela. Theo, sit down, both of you. Thank you, sir. I've had my dinner. Have another one, Angela. If you're worrying about sitting down with your general, then stop worrying. I'm not a general anymore. Clive, what has happened? Retired again. Hexed. They don't need me anymore. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, I, I know how that feels. No, you don't? Oh, I was barely 45 when it happened to me. Different kettle of fish. You were made to do it. But we're not finished. Nor am I. Just starting. I've often thought a fellow like me dies. Special knowledge. Awful waste. Well, am I dead? Does my knowledge count for nothing, eh? Experience? Skill? You tell me. It is a different knowledge they need now, Clyde. The enemy is different, so you have to be different, too. Are you mad? I know what war is. I don't agree. You... I read your broadcast up to the point where you described the collapse of France. You commented on Nazi methods, foul fighting, bombing refugees, machine gunning hospitals, lifeboat, light ships, bailed out pilots and so on, by saying that you despised them, that you would be ashamed to fight on their side, and that you'd sooner accept defeat than victory if it could only be won by those methods. So I would. Clive, if you let yourself be defeated by them just because you are too fair to hit back the same way they hit at you, 
There won't be any methods but Nazi methods. If you preach the rules of the game, while they use every foul and filthy trick against you, they'll laugh at you. They think you're weak, decadent. I thought so myself in 1919. I heard all that in the last war. They fought foul then, and who won it? I don't think you won it. We lost it, but you lost something too. You forgot to learn the moral. Because victory was yours, you failed to learn your lesson 20 years ago, and now you have to pay the school fees again. Some of you will learn quicker than the others. Some will never learn it, because you've been educated to be a gentleman and a sportsman in peace and in war, but Clive, Dear old Clive, this is not a gentleman's war. This time you are fighting for your very existence against the most devilish idea ever created by a human brain, Nazism. And if you lose, there won't be a return match next year, perhaps not even for a hundred years. You mustn't mind me, an alien, saying all this. But who can describe hydrophobia better than one who's been bitten and is now immune? Well, you see, Angela, even one's best friend lets one down. I don't think so, sir. You too, eh? Kick a fellow when he's down, what? Right? Nobody will ever kick you, sir. You, you just got to change over, that's all. Change over to what? Well, a new job. It's easy enough for a man. Think so, eh? Swap horses in midstream. <laughs> a lot of people have had to do it in this war, sir. It's better than drowning. Bravo, Angela. I shall call you John in future. She's hit the nail on the head. I don't know you. You shouldn't give up so easily, my boy. Is this the same man who took Berlin by storm 40 years ago? Look at me. Nobody wants me, but do I give up? Nobody wants you, and you're an expert. I don't know anything but soldiering. Not even that, apparently. What about the Home Guard, sir? They need leaders. They're just becoming an army. If we're invaded, they're our first defense. The papers say so. There you are. You know everybody. Could You could get them arms and instructors and equipment. Oh, what the job. Forming a new army. Home guard, eh? Yes, sir. I was going to tell you myself, sir. You're drunk, Murdoch. Tell me what. That I joined the home guard, sir. You? Yes, sir. Anything wrong with the soup, sir? How should anybody know if they haven't touched it? Take it away, Lance Corporal Murdoch. Sergeant Murdoch, sir. What have you been doing, sir, all this time? Nothing, you blockhead, except talk. But watch now. For me and me old China. Oh! <laughs> Get your skates on. See this Major General Clive Wing Candy. Blimey, what a moniker. Fill it up. And moved to Royal Bathers Club, Piccadilly. Should think he needed a bath after this lot. Good luck to the old bastard. <laughs> 
Do you? Uh, just going to... Don't be late. I won't, sir. I get what's that. The gun, sir. Brother's a gamekeeper. That's the ticket. Load with number four. We'll soon have rifles, Tommy guns, too. Know which end is which? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> That's right. <coughs> Break it up, Jeps. Good afternoon. Can't be left the proper weapons, or I'll know the reason why. I won't leave that damn doorstep. I'll make a stay in stoke or a sit down strike or whatever they call it. We'll show them, Angela, eh? A real army, eh? The men are all right, keen as mustard. Organization, general staff, offices, general headquarters. That's what we want, and by gad, we'll get them. You hear, Angela? Yes, sir. Give me one year. Six months. I'm sure. Afternoon off. Thank you, sir. Club 730. Very good, sir. Point to the throat, my boy. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is the task. What? This is the most vital and comprehensive exercise in which the Home Guard have yet taken part. Defense of London. We've trained for it, we can tackle it. We'll put up a good show, eh? <laughs> we'll show these youngsters there's life in the old dog yet. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, war starts at midnight. <laughs> Got to go in a minute. Why? Got a job on. Oh, you would have. <laughs> Come and have a look. See that? What, those trucks? My private army. Well, what about it? Do you remember what you told me last night? Amongst other things. Yes, I do, and I wish I hadn't told you now. Why do you think that I wanted the lowdown on sugar candies movements? Well, why did you? What's the mystery? We're off to see him. Who? The wizard. What for? Because of the wonderful things he does to ra da 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 oh, shut up, Spud. What do you mean? We're going to teach him total war. How? Capture him. War starts at midnight, but we're going to bag him ours before that. Nazi methods, you know. You're not a Nazi, Spud. We're not training to fight Englishmen. You can't do can't this. Can't I? What? I won't let you do it. He's such a dear old man. So will I be when I'm over the hundred. Ah, tea. But, Spud, how can you do it? I know what it would mean. You can't. 
can't stop me, Johnny. Within an hour, the wizard will be the captive of my bone spear, not to mention three dozen of the toughest troops between here and New Zealand. Come on, drink this. But, Spud, don't you see? I gave you the information, and it's me to take advantage of Don't be a sissy. In war, anything goes. wishes to speak to General Win Candy. Yes, it's but Is General Win Candy in the club? Uh, no, sir. The General left an hour ago with Brigadier General Cordicott near yes, Vice Marshal Lloyd Hughes. Did he say where he was going? Excuse me, sir, but what is your business with the General? I have a message for him, an urgent message. You give me the message, I'll see the General oh, gets it. damn it, old man. Are you a home guard? Why, sir? The password is Vefkiko 1911. The General and his staff are in the Turkish bar, sir. Sergeant Hawkins, sir. you're in charge here. Stay with him. And don't you leave a desk or answer the phone. You're a prisoner. The war doesn't start till midnight. Uh -huh. That's what you think. Sergeant, sir. that girl under there, she's a prisoner too. Corporal, the three men will All be... All right, boys, this yeah. is it. Group four, sand, ruddy ignorance. Come on, off, kid. Come on. Hello? Hello? We'll warn him then. Warn him, can't you understand English? Tell him to hide. Gentlemen, the war will soon be over. We agree it's very fine to win the last battle. We much prefer to win the first. You will be kept prisoner in this building till 6 a.m. Glad you've come. I couldn't have stood anybody else. Oh, that's all right. You've heard, I suppose? Yes. Johnny told me. And? Well, I think it is a dirty trick, but I can't help finding it a bit funny, too. It is. That's the worst of it. What do you think is going to happen now? Officially, this young fellow would be brought up before a court of inquiry and the exercise repeated some other time. Will there be an inquiry, sir? No, there won't. I'll see to that. Where is he now? Well, Spud, sir. Oh, he's with his men. They are marching into London. Did you see them? Yes, we saw them coming when we came across the Cromwell Road. The whole army with bands. How did they look, eh? Well, Clive, I must say they... Oh, they looked okay. up my place rather nicely. Oh, they built an emergency water tank there too, sir. Oh, 
I've been thinking this over all night. I don't want to get this young fellow into trouble. I think I'll invite him to dinner instead. Wasn't I just as much of a young fool as he is? Of course I was. Yes. But I wonder if he's going to be such a grand old man as you are. When I was a young chap, I was all guests and gators with no experience worth a damn. Now, tons of experience and nobody thinks I'm any use. I remember when I got back from Berlin in 02. Old Betteridge gave me the worst wigging I ever had. And then he invited me to dinner. I didn't accept. Often wish I had. Yes, I think I will invite him to dinner, and he'd better accept, you hear? Yes, sir. Here they come. Now, here is the lake, and I still haven't changed. Sir? 